So what, I, what our mind is, is a flowing stream of neural maps. And those maps, uh, once we have a self, once we have consciousness, are experienced as images. And it's very important when I use the term images to call attention to the fact that, you know, when you think of images, you tend to think of visual images because that, you know, we, we're such visual creatures and we use the term image so often for the things that are around us in photographs, in paintings, uh, in the views we have of the world that you tend to think of visual images only. But that's not the case. Uh, images is a term that applies to, for example, sound images. You hear uh, a, a musical piece played in the piano and you have a variety of acoustic images or auditory images. And the same thing for olfaction or the same thing for touch. Uh, all of those are images. And images are nothing more than, or it's, it's plenty, uh, neural maps that are being constructed out of information that comes from a certain sensory source. It can be from the retina, uh, it can be from the cochlea in the inner ear, it can be fr from the, um, the, the sensors that we have in our skin in relation to touch, and on and on. All those different sensory systems give you information, and they give information to different parts of the brain, and the brain concocts these packages, these maps uh, that are very complex when you say the word map, uh, and concoction, you think, well, this is like a simple assembly of dots. It's far more complex than that. It really requires many, many areas of the brain working together to construct an image such as, for example, the image of your face or the image of the landscape out in the street. Um, and once those images are constructed, uh, you have the possibility of inserting them in a sort of procession, which is the procession of our mind. And of course, we had a great uh, psychologist slash philosopher, William James, who pointed it out in a beautiful, beautiful way uh, and, and talked about the stream of consciousness or the stream of thought. Actually, that was his first term for it. Uh, and he called attention to the fact that there was this flow, this enchainment of images, and that some were sharp and some were more sort of out of focus. Uh, and uh, when you think about the literature uh, of the 20th century, when you think about Joyce or Faulkner, you think about people who had, and of course Proust, uh, you, you have people that had this very intense and accurate observation of their own mind processes and actually aped that mind, that, that's the word, aped that mind process in their writing. They were able to write as if it was coming out of their stream of consciousness.